Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, so we are live now on Yeah. Okay, so I think uh, we can get started. Yeah, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining for this webinar today. Uh, we are glad to have you, and we are very excited also to launch this series of webinar. This is initiated by uh, Indo-Euro Synchronization and German Varsity, uh, along with us, NSN. I'm Madhuri Dubey, Founder Director, National Skills Network, and I welcome you all to this session. In this series, we are going to plan more sessions in the coming weeks and I invite you to uh, attend all of them as well. We'll keep you updated. But we are starting with something which is absolutely relevant today and which our country, that is India, needs to learn a lot from Germany. And also the collaboration in this field is, uh, there are ample opportunities to collaborate in this field. And we are talking about the need for quality enhancement Remember the word here is enhancement, which means that yes, we do have quality parameters in India, but to be, uh, to be able to work in different countries, particularly in countries like Germany, there, are, there is a need to follow certain standards and certain quality parameters. And it is here that the word enhancement makes a lot of sense, and especially in higher education. So today in this session, we are going to look at uh, many aspects of quality enhancement. And the webinar assumes greater importance today because it is also in the larger context of India's G20 presidency, where Germany and India will also be exchanging a lot of notes. Maybe there could be partnerships, there could be uh, MOUs happening in the coming few days. And also the day is kind of strategic because uh, from tomorrow onwards, uh, Delhi is preparing for this big event uh, on G20 presidency. Many countries are participating, as you may be aware. So in that context uh, today, uh, you know, this webinar is even more important, as I said. So as we go ahead, what we can be looking at would be more in terms of uh, collaboration between Germany and India in terms of education, employment, and skilling, and also in the larger context of how India has opened up many opportunities for people uh, to reform their curriculum, their pedagogy in the light of NEP 2020. So I think this gives the best uh, forum for us, you know, which we are organizing today, where certain important themes and topics and sub themes can be discussed. So uh, I welcome you all once again, whoever has joined just now, and I would encourage you to share your comments, your questions in the chat window as we go ahead discussing these points. So before I get started, just a couple of lines on the importance of this topic. Uh, like I just told you, there is no substitute to quality, but India also has a challenge of quantity. We talk numbers. Now, when we talk numbers and we have to align with quality parameters, it's a huge task. I mean, sometimes it's like it's next to impossible, but there are ways and means if we believe that quality is something we should follow, then I'm sure we can balance both. That is quality and quantity. By quantity, I mean the numbers we have in India when we talk about higher education. So the endeavor of higher education in India and the uh, activities and the programs and the systems and models which Germany has, and also the vocational model, the dual uh, vocational model, which he has shown to the world as a global benchmark, uh, gives us ample scope for us to go deeper into few topics, a uh, few themes. And uh, on that note, I would like to get started uh, by welcoming the guests, the panelists, uh, uh, so welcome to this uh, webinar, Professor Bertram Lomuller, uh, Director and Professor of Steinbeis University, Germany. Uh, Mr. Raj Vankapandu, 
founder president german varsity indo euro synchronization india professor gunther stark a uh, research director fh arkan university germany and dr buddha chandra shekhar chief coordinating officer aict india so welcome once again and it's really uh, we are very privileged actually to have all of you in this panel and um, i would like to get started by requesting you to share your views on the topic of the webinar that is quality enhancement in higher education so may i request professor bertram lomuller to share his views on uh, the idea of quality maybe we can spend about 2 minutes on this and get your insights from each one of you on your definition and your views of quality in higher education yes thank you. uh could you please no, unmute yourself yes, yes thank you yeah. so uh, thank you very much for these uh, nice welcome words uh, it's a pleasure to be part here in uh, this panel and to share some insights uh, from the german perspective uh, what i'm always saying at the end we have to exchange our experience and have to learn from each other uh, steinbeis has a specific um, uh, model the steinbeis model is that the students uh, are working 100% in projects parallel they are doing their masters study in business engineering or in uh, electronics or in uh, mechatronics that depends on uh, the different areas but the method is always the same at the end um, the quality gates i would say what steinbeis is doing is how effective uh, the students are able to bring results to their specific project that means at the beginning um, there are some uh, discussions with uh, the students and also with uh, the project uh, uh, owners and at the end we have to define a road map how to bring uh, the results in the next two years in line with the master's program on the academic level but also on the practical level and i think this is what uh, the german perspective and especially the steinbeis perspective can bring in and also to think about what are the quality measures and also the scorecards we have behind these models Uh, this i think what we can bring in and discuss together with our indian colleagues so now you also unmuted i think yeah i would request yeah. mr raj to share his views on the importance of uh, quality in higher education Uh, thank you thank you dr madri and uh, i'm very happy to be a part of today along with uh, uh, our esteemed speakers so very good morning and very good after, good evening to india and good morning from germany and uh, uh, yeah dr madri actually has given a uh, very rightly in a welcome re uh, remarks and tomorrow is actually big day uh, in india and also this is actually entire year, you know uh, we already celebrating like you know 70 years of independence day and also last year Uh, we already celebrated the 60 years of india eu diplomatic relation germany and india always coming together several times in order to join hands for the topic of education and research and uh, also i would like to give uh, some information as a part of the welcome remarks germany is always a part of integration of uh, india new academic programs and quality developments as one such example is rwt sakhan is a founding partner to iit madras and uh, so whatever the reasons are actually you know different impact happening by the pandemic despite of the pandemic uh, related the decline in the economic growth india remains focused to the global interest and also indian government is aware of the key importance of education and research for developing in full potential setting of the ambitious and becoming one of the world's leading research nations is always also part of our intergovernmental uh, consultations so last one actually we are already having in the sixth consultation in 2022 but this indo german partnerships in higher education mentioned already in the third intergovernmental consultation and also we are very happy on this occasion we already you know bypassed china and india became a number one 
in order to have a student mobility for higher education in german universities so there is a reason actually today's topic and also this point of quality enhancement and also actually how to maintain sustainability of the quality programs becoming very important as uh, professor laimuller mentioned stand based practices as a project methodology based practices so nearly since a decade even ies and indo euro synchronization also uh, we are bringing uh, also german varsity also we are trying to bring the three level uh, quality methodologies actually to adopt into indian higher education to give a due diligence and certify them with a with a good quality mark this is how actually we are trying to impact on this uh, uh, on this particular uh, topic and uh, you know with this remark i would like to hand over back to dr madhuri to take the session forward thank you dr madhuri yeah thank you uh, mr raj uh, has mr ganther joined oh uh, okay so, so some small information from him i think he is middle of uh, some topic some uh, you know he could not able to join so we will continue with our uh, three speakers okay. today yeah okay 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 so now i invite uh, dr buddha chandrashekar uh to tell us more about the topic and your views and experience sir uh and your perspective on the importance of quality maybe you can also continue from the previous speakers about how they have defined and what their views are on behalf of the ministry of education i welcome all of you for this uh, so much on the topic quality and You are not able to hear you properly. Yeah, there is uh, there isn't much clarity. Is it clear now? Uh, yeah, but very low and very feeble. Is it clear now? Yeah, it's better. Hmm. on behalf of uh, ministry of education i welcome all of you for this uh, very much needed uh, uh, initiative called quality enhancement in higher education uh, okay. and and you know as we i would like to first thank uh, german university and nsn skill network indo euro synchronization organization you know for conducting such a wonderful uh, international event because you know it's as uh, we as indians you know we feel the entire globe is our family i actually came to tell you mm. about that landing page and i forgot completely yeah so there are i mean you know i see there is lots of engagement happening between uh, australia and uh, india uh, not only with respect to the education with respect to skilling researching innovation startup ecosystem and lot of student exchange programs and uh, which includes the capacity building because you know india as well as uh, australia has a lot of uh, common things together and lot of indians working there in uh, in uh, in australia and you know and uh, and uh, i don't know whether uh, australians know this or not but you know this was a we used to in mahabharata this was a place you know where uh, arjuna and others they stored their weapons <laughs> so that is what you know the now the name was slowly moved towards to australia so you know that that's what you know we strongly believe we have a connection you know with uh, with uh, with uh, you know with uh, german as well as you know with uh, other uh, uh, countries so so uh, you know as as um, i'm so happy to to be part of this and i see as in a dynamic landscape of this higher education you know so giving a quality content and a quality enhancement especially at the phase of designing and planning is going to play a vital role and that's where i see you know i would like to recommend some game changing considerations uh, like example you know first we need to collaboration you know is a, one of the biggest key which basically i see that you know little lagging i think you know we need to create a content curriculum or a content you know which is acceptable on a universe in nature you know so that what happens the content is not only relevant in local it is acceptable on a international uh, you know level so what it really means is you know we need to have a have lot of critical thinking and you know we need to put lot of creativity into it and using the existing infrastructure which is very very important i think you know that's again another uh, area i see because you know if you have a uh, have a facility which is world class in nature so that you know that's where you define the quality right because when i did my uh, mba and uh, internship uh, uh, entrepreneurship from usa so i realized the one thing you know what 
they focus is on the high quality i think you know it's not only about the quality i think we need to along with the quality quantity in our country we need to focus on the quality also and when we are creating this kind of a curriculum or uh, or you know or any kind of a content i think we need to make sure it's a world class uh, defined and we have a technology in use because you know the technology basically plays a major role for creating a content because now the content is purely driven using the digital technologies so the content may be not in a textual format it may be in a image based format it may be in a in a video based format it may be in a ar based based format it may be in a vr based format or a 3d based or a hologram based i think what kind of content we are talking about you know the so along with that content the quality of the content plays a major role and as you know there a lot of stimulations are happening i mean recently what we did we uh, we worked out with one of the german company uh, who is uh, uh, constructing a new aeroplane engine so what we did we digital twin uh, you know we have taken a digital twin of that uh, physical engine which resides in german and our students in our education institute started working on the digital twin they started fine tuning and they have submitted their uh, their inputs back to the uh, german company i think you know th th this is kind of a high level uh, content types what we are talking about so there the quality of course you know plays a, plays a major uh, role so what i'm trying to say is you know we need to uh, evolve and adopt you know all the new technologies coming up and at the same time you know we need to support things out of the classroom because what i see is most of the times uh, indian uh, you know the old nep basically more on the rote methodology but the new nep national education policy 2020 encourages the students to think uh, you know out of the box you know to do a critical thinking and you know and try to do things on a practical manner so that you know the student can understand more and there is a industry and uh, you know academia collaboration so now i see lot of students are coming to us are they are requesting you know they want to go to germany and visit the universities and visit the industries and co learning you know so that's what i see you know it's called a universal learning so so what they are learning here on the content perspective they are visualizing their their experience in that in german you know what a beautiful concept you know this is what i i say call it as a vasudeva kutumbakam you know vasudeva you know universal learning maybe you know let's put it in that way so it's a universal learning you know now uh, it's no more that you know we are learning something which is have some boundaries there is no boundaries and another thing i see that you know there are a lot of um, grants are available scholarships are available you know the universities in germany as well as the industries they are planning uh, you know financial support to the students and it vice versa also you know india also trying uh, you know our best to do this i think you know these all are like um, i see uh, opportunity windows and research is playing a major role because i see that german whenever i think about germany you know it's a research hub i think it's a opportunity for students you know not only be like working under someone but they can become a researcher and innovator i think this is a wonderful opportunity for the students to become a researchers or innovators and uh, they have a very good startup ecosystem which you know as india also started adopting and now india become a third largest startup startup ecosystem but having said that you know ours are more service oriented but if you see german uh, right they are more on a manufacturing and product oriented i think you know we need to give this kind of experience to our students so i welcome this um, initiative and this uh, thought process and maybe i will just pass it on back to you uh, for further discussions with all other uh, colleagues thank you yeah thank you uh, dr chandrashekar for giving us a big picture view i would say where you connected very well with the larger concept uh, which is also in sync with the g20 event uh the world you know being uh, you know coming together actually and uh, we as you said we are already connected with many countries and the importance of quality uh, cannot be denied and we have to see how it can be implemented uh, i would uh, i would now come back to the theme itself but then go a little bit deeper uh into the aspect of let's say designing and planning education higher education programs 
and uh, how does one ensure that a set of quality parameters are taken into consideration? So I would again request uh, Professor Bertram to uh, tell us more about uh, you know, uh, the parameters or the actual implementation part in the design phase, in the design and planning phase. Like say in Germany, we heard so much about the industry integrate integration of higher education. Most of your programs have uh, become role models for the entire world to follow. So perhaps you can take some examples from there and tell us how you ensure it at the design and planning uh, level. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Uh, I will share one slide uh, if, it's, uh, if uh, it's allowed. So, okay, this is the slide um, I want to show. Uh, just a moment, I need it bigger. So, good. Um, I have here a little bit more systematically the quality quadrangle of the project competence study. Uh, and along this uh, quadrangle, uh, we are defining our uh, quality measures and also our KPIs. The starting point is always a real problem within a company uh, and the first quality stage is that together with the student the problem has to define in a clear matter and as we are doing it mainly in master studies because uh, we have learned the project competence study needs a little bit more self-management and project management competences which is only uh, I would say not only, but uh, students who are older and therefore uh, if they have a bachelor degree, they are much more able to run these uh, project competence study. We are starting with a real problem, defining it and defining then milestones, what kind of milestones are important and what kind of results uh, the company and uh, the project owner wants and what we as a university on the theoretical level and academic level want to have. Uh, at the beginning, and this is where we are starting, you are starting with the theory. That means also we are starting also to build up uh, and doing lessons, especially for project management, innovation management, mechatronics or IT technologies. This is more the theoretic level. And um, uh, the next point is um, after a seminar, which is more theoretical, uh, the students are going back into their project and then they have to work out a so-called transfer work or transfer paper. That means at Steinbeck University, we don't have any classical, uh, I would say um, examinations, multiple choice tests, uh, that means we are doing transfer papers. That means the students have to take the theory, analyze it on an academic level, and then uh, linking the theory to their real project. And at the end, there must be a real recommendation how this topic could be uh, added and uh, what is the value in order to bring the project uh, furthermore. That means this transfer is a very important issue. And you see this red line. I would say this is uh, the main issue where we define our quality uh, issues. How the theory could be transferred uh, to the project. And at the end, there must be a real result. Uh, from the concept, it means uh, uh, we have uh, divided the, the study time always into six weeks or two month plugs. That means uh, every six weeks, the student have three days, four days, theoretical seminars. Then they are back in the project, working on their transfer papers, submitting the papers, getting a feedback from uh, the professors, also from the project owners. And with this feedback, they are going then into the next session uh, where we are then going into the next topics. What we also have learned on a quality issue is uh, we have created a own learning platform and normally the students have access 
six weeks before a theoretical training uh, is uh, starting, they can learn uh, the theory by themselves. And we use the residential trainings where they are together to discuss this uh, theoretical knowledge and also work in real practical cases and uh, to show how these uh, theoretical knowledge could be then implemented. And you see this uh, um, quadrangle uh, is for us the framework we are defining on every level the different kind of KPIs and also the different quality gates uh, from the theory, but also from the practical issue. And uh, one important issue for quality is uh, that our professors need a specific competence. It's not the competence only to provide good theoretical knowledge. Uh, the competence is always also to coach the students how to transfer the theory into practice. That means the professors and also our Steinbase experts need a lot and invest a lot of time for individual coaching of uh, the students in order to increase uh, the quality of uh, the outcome. Uh, this is uh, more or less the framework we are working on and uh, the framework where we are then defining our quality issues. Okay. Yeah, thank you uh, for sharing the framework. I'll come back to you again uh, for a little more details uh, after I ask uh, Mr. Raj about his perspective on this. I could see very important things coming up, Mr. Raj, here. One was the theory to practice uh, part of it. And when you talk about theory to practice, there is a very important uh, uh, challenge, you know, or I would say something that blocks this is the quality parameters again, right? So that was one and another important thing uh, which came up when uh, Mr. Batram was talking about uh, quality was the competence of the teachers, the capacity building element. And third, I noticed was the scope for internships and apprenticeships and some kind of industry exposure. So if you look at something like this, you know, in different dots, we need to connect them. So what's your view about design and planning level quality, uh, you know, aspects that we need to keep in mind or take into consideration? Oh, uh, definitely, Dr. Madhuri. So as uh, Professor Betra mentioned, one right point is actually the competency of the experts. And also, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar mentioned already some activities, awareness happening, you know, between India and Australia, you know, and also a lot of grants, so even Germany also coming forward. And uh, with our experience, maybe to this question, I would like to address uh, one of the practical experience what we are having, what we adopted uh, the last uh, 10 years is uh, like a 3A approach. So we are following this in our in our indoor synchronization in German varsity because as an organization we are actually like you know acting as a facilitator for both the universities and students and also the programs. So what we have done is uh, we we created a, some kind of a three A approach and also we adopted and modified since last ten years and I'm very happy to mention it is all nearly impacting ten thousand Indian bachelor students and empowering them to achieve the next level opportunities now in Indian higher education and also German higher education linking to employment. This approach, this 3A approach, uh, you know, has developed, you know, and also it is not, not a, like a novel kind of like, you know, not a motivation thing. It actually result, it, uh, it resembles the motivation thing like, you know, like uh, aware, active and achieve, but is a purely linking to technicalities of any program, what actually we are developing. The first A actually uh, resembling the awareness of the program. So we really need to have the proper awareness, even the takers or also in the giver, givers. So what actually we are creating, what actually takers are doing and takers actually taking into it. And second one actually like, you know, creating some activities like uh, courses, labs and hands-on experience. So from the awareness, we need to link to the activities. Then we should actually link to achievable items. So, you know, students once actually, you know, they did something, they have to see how, you know, what kind of things they can achieve, what kind of mapping actually, you know, uh, they can be done. So if we are actually having this kind of a three blocks or three years into any picture, then from the idea of inception until the idea of the achievement, 
a student actually can actually can you know visualize so i would like to address this the design and planning if any program if we are having all the three elements definitely uh, this will give a good results and also sustainability of the program yeah yeah thank you uh, for telling us more about uh, you know how you have interpreted the quality parameters it would be nice to hear from uh, dr chandrashekar more about uh you know the quality aspect again of course but at the design and planning stage sir like uh, uh, if i have to give you an example from the changes we are undergoing from the nep point of view especially today we talk about credit framework uh, we talk about outcome based learning and also technology is uh, you know all over the place and we are trying our best to implement there are dual degrees lot of things are changing in higher education so what would be your idea of how we can ensure the design and planning uh, part is also driven by quality measures and the thought process behind quality uh, i see this in a different way like you know the future of higher education is not just about the degrees you know it's no more a degree because google himself saying that you know uh, if you don't have degree but you know how to write code you are in what it really means is you know the the degree is getting transformed into a skill so it's all about the experiences you know the insight and the transformative journey the student goes through i think for the, in order to give this kind of a high quality uh, uh, you know to in the higher education we need a design and planning you know so in order to deliver unparalleled uh, educational quality i recommend you know few things one of them are strategic blueprint because you know first you need to have a very well crafted goals resources and milestones you know so that you can you know you know where are where you heading that is very one very very important the second thing as you already mentioned you know the nep gives lots of importance to the technology because it's just not a tool you know it's it's a, it's a basically a bridge between the education and and the student or or you know or the learner i think this this is empowering and we need to use the power of this advanced learning management systems and digital uh, platforms which can super charge you know all our delivery mechanisms you know in, our, in respect to the, the various content types you know which i described a few minutes back so so i i see this like example the national credit framework which we recently come up right what it really means is that you know the in in, in the across the country there is a standard for the credit so now within our country we are standardizing this across the universities and institutes you know whether it's a stem based or a non stem based and we will we are equating that with the with the international credit frameworks so that the student who wants to uh, you know transfer his education from india to uh, to example in this case you know germany so they can without any hassle they can transfer you know all their credit all their transcripts and we are coming up with something called apar apar means there is a unique id we are going to give to each and every student what it really means is you know you can track the the uh, the learning patterns of the student and you can attach a mentor to him example let's say i am interested on uh, deep learning okay so depends on the courses and depends on the on the subject areas you know i'm i'm learning basically the government will recognize and we will attach a mentor to him we will see you know whether he is interested on in researching or he is interested on in startup is he interested on in incubation or is he interested on in innovation what is that he is interested based on that you know we will guide the student you know we will give them more content i think you know the the national education policy uh, allowed or empowered and gave the wing to for the customize the entire education system for the student because every student is unique their learning patterns are unique so you can't have the same content and same content type given it to the all the students in your classroom so so that's where you know we are utilizing this uh, technology and trying to give them you know what exactly they want and what format they want and and uh, you know that basically leads to a customizable uh, you know customized content you know as i said you know one size doesn't fit all and this tailoring customizable content and personalizing as well as interactive which is very very important i see that you know unless until the the content is adoptive in nature you know then uh, the the student don't engage 
i think you know we need to understand you know that's where the quality comes into picture so are you giving a richer content and engaging content and understandable content and easy to understand content and a high quality in nature and personalized in nature and customizable in nature i think you know these are the various parameters which we need to you know plan when while we are creating this and then we need to have a feedback loop so now as i mentioned earlier you know the nep basically allowed us you know to go in a iteration mode so that we are trying to take the regular feedback from various stakeholders like students like uh, uh, you know uh, uh, parents institutes uh, of course you know the faculty and we are fine tuning our educational processes and another beautiful thing what uh, recently you know i mean you know anyone is to adopt is the mentor mentee system i think you need to have a quality ambassador you know who can define and set a standard and make sure that you know everyone manages and maintains this uh, this standard and you know and whenever it is evaluating i think you know we need to go to the next level right so you need to have a quality ambassadors to do it and the last but not least is the fdp sdp programs i mean you know we do lot of faculty development and uh, student development program so the recent faculty development programs which we identified all are all like on a future technology what we did uh, but ma'am uh, we have created a artificial intelligence robot and try to understand the future job opportunities for next 15 years and we basically started training all our students and faculty on that so now what happens you know from artificial intelligence to water management system to blockchain applications towards a data science applications or a, or a, or a, you know um, uh, or a nanotechnologies or a semiconductor applications i think you know we have identified 56 such uh, uh, future technologies and started empowering all of our students and as well as faculty as well as the faculty because we see that faculty is the one who disseminates the knowledge so the more knowledge they have you know the more learning methodologies they adopt i think you know they can disseminate more knowledge so this basically leads to actionable and achievable items uh, you know which is very very important at the end of the day because how you will track this uh, quality so you need to have a real time dashboard you need to have a scheduled audit of the content as well as of, of the entire uh, mechanism you know of internally as well as externally maybe sometimes you know we are even uh, trying to create a, a kind of a feedback system you know from from the third party so that we can understand you know how we can improve and there are a lot of stakeholder surveys uh, we are doing lot of uh, you know quality assurance teams which we are creating so i think you know these all are going to define the quality of higher education so the, the the design and planning plays a major role and i see that you know we all need to work together on this because this is not a not a one time uh, affair i think you know we all need to work together share the knowledge with each other learn from each other and try to implement the best of the best you know out of this and take it forward and i i you know i'm so happy to see such uh, events and i think you know we need to have much more events and the more audience you know more different set of quality of people you know from way, different ways of life and maybe more industries also you know to be involved so that we all can work together and understand you know what is the benchmark what is the you know the basic standard for this quality so we all need to be define that i think you know we can take it forward from this yeah yeah thank you professor chandrashekar for uh, going into the details and giving us good examples as well from the initiatives that are being taken from the government and uh, also for the audience i would like you to please make a note uh, i think we are having a very insight, insightful discussion uh, you are also getting few good examples from the panelists and uh, i would like to now continue on the second part of the quality aspect uh, we can have maybe next uh, 12 minutes or so i would ask each one of you in the next 3 minutes to tell us something which is actually the challenge of quality as we say when we talk about quality it's all good we hear design planning in most cases i'm talking about the general context uh, so um, and but then when it comes to execution there are many hurdles many hassles and many things and that's where it gets diluted and that's where we need uh, you know a lot of uh, checks and balances and things 
and also i have often heard few people telling me that quality is like you know it's a belief that we have that i want to deliver quality so i give that and it becomes a part of my system from the personal to the institutional there are many challenges so i would like to begin by asking professor bertram about his views on the interventions that should happen or we should take up when we are really executing a project which is driven by quality Yes, thank you very much. It's uh, uh, not only one question. We have mentioned so many, many sub questions, and we yeah. can discuss a lot about them. Um, but I think uh, you're right. There are different perspectives on, on on quality, and this is what we also see. And uh, in order uh, to to secure it, uh, there are also within Steinbeis, I would say, the three perspectives. It's uh, the student. It's the faculty and it's the project owner, which is normally industry. And they have all different views on, 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 on quality. Um, uh, if you're talking uh, especially on the, the professors and teachers, okay, their issue is on, is there latest technology, latest know-how available? How it is available? Uh, is uh, the documents uh, and also the materials, are they really clear? And uh, is it uh, for, for everybody able uh, to read it and to, to learn in a very uh, clear way? Um, therefore, I think this is the, the one perspective. If you're going into the company's perspective, they say, okay, theory, it's nice. We need a real solution for our problem. What is the solution, what we can, can do? Uh, and uh, at the end, these two perspectives are now focusing on the student because uh, he has to uh, do it in two different ways. Quality on the academic level is the theory. What I've learned uh, is it clearly understood. Can I write a paper on a scientific way? Can I structure it? Uh, can I do it also visualize it? in a good way. And on the other hand, then uh, from the quality issue, how to, to bring uh, this theory really and link it up with this uh, theoretical issue. And um, I also want to share also one other slide, only, only short uh, view. That means uh, what I see, and this is what we always say, because at the end, in the middle, there is always the student. And the student I have mentioned here as uh, the manager because he has to manage his study project. He has to manage uh, all the work. And uh, therefore, from the quality issue, we are saying at the end, we need seven different areas. First, okay, I have to steer myself and uh, uh, my person itself. Then I have to link up with the individuals. These are the project owners, these are my colleagues, uh, these are uh, also people within the university, these are my friends, um, and uh, how to deal with them, how to communicate with them. Then I have to deal with a lot of information, external, internal information. I need also to think about how to uh, analyze it and what kind of information is the important uh, information I need. Uh, also, the colleagues have mentioned latest technologies, what is the future. I have also to have a perspective and to think about how to deal with uh, the future. At the end, I have to managing everything. I need uh, manufacturing processes. I need also business processes and I need project management and the processes how to manage my individual uh, project within the company. And what I also see as a very big quality issue, and I'm always saying, especially in agility, flexibility, I have learned Indian students are very uh, educated because they learned it from the beginning. The Germans are more strict and they are not so flexible at the end. This is what I see we can learn a lot from, from India. But at the end, you need this. And uh, the final thing is uh, quality issue also means uh, for me, uh, you have to deal with financials. And the biggest quality issue, and I think this is for the three parties, students, uh, companies, and also for uh, university staff is, you need this holistic approach. At the end, you have to bring all together. 
And if you match this, I would say this is the highest quality degree I will give everybody. If you can live in a complex world and you can analyze for you, how are the interactions and how to deal uh, with these uh, different areas. You see also here, you have different perspectives and uh, maybe this gives also then a little bit guideline what uh, we from our philosophy see as a, a very good guideline to deal with this complexity of also quality management in uh, higher education. Yeah, thank you, Professor Bertram, for sharing the details like you did, and also to see the student in the center, because he or she is the, the students are the main beneficiaries, and I think the ecosystem uh, revolves around them and uh, we are here to uh, you know do the best for them uh, and uh, learning from the uh, for the slide that you shared just now and to take it a little bit forward I would like to seek some insights from uh, Mr. Raj uh, see mostly Mr. Raj in India when we talk about quality even today I think if you look at the materials that we produce for teaching or the curriculum usually uh, when we talk about interventions at the execution level it's like a checklist okay i kind of put a check mark and i mean tick mark and then i say uh, it's qc now okay but i think that kind of qc doesn't work in a human centered activity like teaching which is so dynamic and uh, like uh, Professor Chandrasekhar was also saying there's so much of diversity, flexibility and things. So what's your opinion on the interventions that I think should be brought in at the execution level? Oh, firstly, uh, before I answer, firstly, I must appreciate uh, Dr. Madhuri, you and your NSN team. I mean, how you designed the panel and how you are driving it. Because actually, this is a very, very generic and elaborated topic, quality enhancement and, you know, uh, sustainability. And uh, as you actually, you know, taken this panel like an uh, execution and the planning thing. So as you ask me towards execution, I would like to take again this in a three-way approach. What I observed in the different bilateral project between India and Germany. My first approach or first insight, actually, I would like to take a uh, little pinch of salt. So experts confidence, but not world confidence. So, you know, whatever actually people are designing and teaching, uh, you know, even before establishing some kind of a delivery process, you know, often the program design and delivery, it is very, very important to have a proper curriculum due diligence and also either it is planned according to the current and futuristic needs. And I, I must appreciate, you know, even uh, our ACT work and also how Dr. Chandrasekhar actually impacting, even actually I met him personally a few times, uh, you know, I got an opportunity to meet him, how he is actually really impacting. At the same time, uh, it is also important for us from the design segment towards execution to have a proper TOT and also communication ex exchange towards the takers. Because that will make a clear understanding actually for the takers also from the start of realistic interest. So I would like to give this kind of in insight as the first insight. And second insight actually, you know, for execution it is very, very important to take a timely feedback and adoptions. And yeah, again, maybe my sentence uh, might not be very uh, fruitful and many people don't like it. Especially what I saw in the Indian side, our professors are not, are not very open to take a open remarks and feedbacks during the program. So even actually, even our German professors and German experts, when we are actually involving them in the program, so always there is a remark like, you know, okay, let's take a feedback at the end, Raj. And, you know, sometimes these programs are six months, one year, one and a half year and two year. I would like to, like, you know, put one point, like an you know, execution is very important uh, to have a timely feedback during the program and not taking some kind of, as you mentioned, like some kind of a tick mark thing at the end of the program and actually talking or thinking about it after two years. So this kind of timely adoption would give a good execution and results uh, towards the processes. And also in execution is also very important how to see uh, on how on what kind of the, you know, the practices we are following, the learning practices delivered properly, which means examination. So when we are actually having, uh, even this can be a student, this can be a, uh, you know, professor, or this can be some industry expert. And uh, whether we are talking a lot of university industry, uh, you know, interaction, the experimental examination also uh, 
required. Not only experimental practices, actually what we are executing, it's very important to have executing in the result oriented thing. For example, along with the theoretical practices, what we are doing, for example, having a project case studies, hackathon kind of the models. And also we can, you know, we can work to have a, a important delivery and learning practices that kind of indulgation is required. I would like to mention this is three way, you know, three different approaches is also, you know, can be considered uh, in the program uh, to have an effective and sustainable execution. Thank you uh, for sharing your views and especially from the execution point of view and reiterating the fact that all the stakeholders are equally responsible in making sure that it is meeting the quality parameters or expectation. Uh, so uh, before we move ahead uh, with uh, questions from the audience, I would like to request uh, Professor Chandrasekhar to share his views on the uh, execution part. So you can tell us a bit about maybe uh, three or four pointers towards what kind of intervention should be taken. Yeah, I mean, the, I see a few challenges based on my experience in the last few years. Yeah. Because, you know, higher education is a very complex uh, you know, subject. So, first thing I will tell you, see, as we are now defining a personalized path, how you define a quality for a personalized path? Because, you know, every every student, every learner, learning patterns are different. So, what is a benchmark, you know, for that, uh, for the personalized path? You know, that is one of the biggest challenge. You know, the entire world is not able to understand and, you know, come up with a benchmark. Second thing is, let's say a student is learning from a virtual lab or an AI tutor or a global classroom. So where you see the students across the globe, they all are coming together and learning something. So what is the quality definition there? You know, again, it's a big question mark example. I recently did one uh, negotiation class from MIT. So there I see 70, I think 60 or 70 students from across the globe. And, and you know, everyone has their own benchmarking in their mind because based on the standards of their country. So how we can basically define this, you know, because the quality for me may be different from, uh, from a student from uh, German, Germany and Australia or USA or in Europe or in London, right? So this, similarly, uh, one more very interesting thing because, you know, we are still stuck up in that, like, uh, you know, we are trying to understand how we will define the quality for innovative ideas, hackathons, collaborative projects, so how, what is that benchmark? You know, again, that's again become a very big uh, problem. The next one I see is, I mean, you know, it's not unsolvable, but I think all the entire professionals across the globe needs to work together to find out a solution. Another challenge is the holistic uh, curriculum design. You know, so that's again another problem, you know, what is a benchmark for this? You know, so I think we need to understand that. And uh, another side I see is the very dynamic nature of industry needs. Because the industry changes the face on a quarterly basis, but you design a curriculum, you know, on a yearly basis. So how you were going to catch them up, you know, so because, you know, the industry, every time if you see, right, the way they do financial transactions in last five years, 96% of businesses across the world became global and digital in nature. But See, I mean, you know, that kind of a speed, what industry adopts, right, and what academia adopts, you know, these are two different things. I think how we can catch them, you know, that's kind of scalability and consistency, because, you know, once you define, but how you are going to maintain it, you know, that's again another challenging. So I think, you know, I think I just stop here, because they said it's, it's like an infinite loop, because, you know, when we are talking about the quality and the trying to plan it and trying to, you know, design it and improve it. I think it's a continuous iterative process. So I think you know it's a continuous learning. So we are also learning and trying to adopt the best of the best uh, policies and framework to give the best of the best to our students and faculty. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, Professor Chandrasekhar. I think that's a very very important point that it's a continuous process, and I think that's what we miss. We feel that okay, it's end of the process activity the moment we realize that it's a continuous process i think our outlook towards quality and adherence to quality and various other things you know come into the picture uh, so before i summarize this part of the uh, session we are getting few questions we had also requested our participants to share questions earlier so we have few of them 
So it would be nice if you can respond. I will just read out some of the questions from here. And we are also live on YouTube. So I request our participants to share their questions. And here as well on Zoom, uh, kindly share if you have any points, any questions or observations. Uh, which can be discussed. Uh, we have another 10 to 15 minutes. So uh, I would like to get started with the questions. But before that, a quick summarizing of uh, the two uh, panel uh, discussion, the two parts of the panel discussion. I think in the first part, we touched upon uh, the design and planning aspect of quality, which is more like a thought process, which is waiting to be conceptualized uh, by taking views from the stakeholders and the importance of how each stakeholder contributes to quality right from let's say the teachers the you know the faculty the industry and everybody who's connected and also it was very well uh, contextualized in the uh, outcome based education system and uh, as professor bertram also showed us the frameworks which is actually impacting the beneficiary the students so this was mostly in the first part of our discussion the second part of our discussion uh, we moved to the in, the actual execution of quality and uh, what kind of intervention so here again we saw that uh, it's not a very easy thing to just say that you know we adhere to quality it has to be demonstrated at every stage and it's an ongoing process and uh, of course in a country like india as we heard many times from the panelists uh, it's not a easy thing to do because of the diversity the kind of uh, issues that surround our education system particularly the higher education and of course the need for industry to contribute to quality is also very important because we are discussing things about work oriented higher education here so i will proceed with the question so the first question is to you professor bertram then this is about uh, the role of the industry in um, higher education uh, from the point of view of faculty development uh, let's say, for example, you know, you need to set up like a center of excellence on the campus where the teachers can play an important or an active role in curriculum design or any aspect of teaching. It's not restricted to teaching the curriculum, but also their role becomes uh, much more wider in ensuring quality. So uh, what would you have to say on this? Like, what could be the role of the industry? Yes, I think um, uh, if you're talking about classical university and industry, I would always say that there is always a gap. And uh, the most important issue, what we have learned, uh, you have to find a common language, how to communicate uh, together and how to link uh, uh, the industry perspective uh, to the theory. Uh, and this is what we have learned also in many research projects, especially small, medium-sized companies, they often are afraid to work together with university because they have uh, their view, they do not understand us, they do not have the practical view on it. Uh, that means um, we have uh, for this uh, specific issue, uh, specific uh, experts, who are doing the moderation between uh, the university experts and uh, the industry. And I think this is a very important issue, uh, how to find these experts also within the university who have this understanding, who have the linkage to the industry, and then also doing this moderation between these two, two parties, and also to have then the reflection uh, from the theoretical, but also from the practical work. At the end, I would say communication and also moderation of the communication process is one key to achieve uh, highest quality for both areas. Uh, thank you, Professor Bertram. And uh, this one, I think, uh, Mr. Raj, perhaps you would be able to answer this well. Uh, it's about our Indian higher education system and uh, how the higher education institute in India can develop and train faculty. So it's more about, I think uh, uh, people would like to know more about faculty development in the context of uh, quality. So how can the faculty upgrade their knowledge and expertise, uh, let's say in emerging technologies? Okay, uh, sure, sure, Dr. Malti. Uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar, you want to give some input because I saw that uh, you are- Yeah. In the industry, uh, academia collaboration plays a major role because if you see uh, 
the old uh, NEP only encourages us to become a worker, right? But if, if imagine a student getting an opportunity to visit the industries along with the faculty and learning something hands-on and trying and implementing those things within the academia and the kind of a research what academia does, right? That's the strength of the, of the academia, right? So imagine that innovation, patenting technologies and researching can be transferred as a knowledge to the industry. I think, you know, this is a kind of a, a two-way, uh, you know, win-win situation is what we need to create. So that's what, you know, we recently started and started the giving uh, 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 internship opportunities to the students from the first year itself. So what happens now they are visiting the, the uh, you know, the uh, industry. So recently we sent a few, some of the students and faculty to a, to a cloud computing company, to, to a mobile manufacturing company, to a car manufacturing company. So once they went there, they came back and they started sharing, saying that, do you know, uh, if you want to create a car, you need more than 2,700 vendors. I think, you know, that, that, that's it. I mean, you know, now their thought process is open. And the students from first year, they started engaging with the industry experts. And the industry experts started giving problem statements to the faculty and students. And they are trying to resolve it with the advanced technologies, you know, what uh, we teach in uh, educational, uh, you know, fraternity. I think this kind of, a, uh, uh, you know, uh, two-way learning uh, uh, approach, you know, knowledge sharing, you know, the real time experience sharing. I think, you know, this is what uh, this industry academy collaboration uh, opened up with the doors. And I see a very bright future because the industries are moving towards industry 4.0. So what it really means is, you know, the in the, every industry needs the technology empowerment in order to do a quick turnaround, right? So, so I think, you know, this is the right combination and the right time. Uh, to have a very strong relationship between the industry and um, and the academia. And now we even started encouraging the industries to put up a shop inside our uh, institute and universities. So, so that what happens, you know, so, so some of their production is happening inside our academia. And, you know, and some of the academia and students, they regularly visit the industry so that the knowledge sharing happens in a, in a appropriate way. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, uh, from the last question of your insight, uh, Dr. Chandrasekhar, now I would like to link to Dr. Madhuri's, uh, you know, the audience question to me. Uh, even actually, I have a similar, uh, you know, a few insights, a uh, few points toward that faculty development and how the institute can look into it, uh, Dr. Madhuri. So as Dr. Chandrasekhar mentioned, as industries putting their shop in the university, so, you know, for that reason, actually, you know, universities or higher education institutions, they should be already like, you know, or they should have insight to have a global team and global perspective. They should be open to it. And the second point I would like to mention, having a point of flexibility and also openness to the students. Of course, that our ADP is uh, giving a, a good boon now to our students. Even today morning, uh, you know, uh, I welcomed, uh, there is actually, you know, the bunch of students came from India. They are going to have 15 days of experience in Germany as a part of our auto sales program. Even exactly, Dr. Chandrasekhar, tomorrow they are visiting the Audi manufacturing factory. And uh, day after tomorrow, they are visiting the museums and, you know, automotive museums, Mercedes and Porsche here. And uh, next week, they are having and sitting in the classroom and laboratories would like to observe the, how the manufacturing is happened, how the theoretical, you know, things are happening and linking. This is exactly today is... Uh, just uh, welcome from the airport and I joined the session after it. So this kind of approach, uh, Dr. Madhuri, if higher education institutions can look forward, like, you know, bringing a global, global perspective, having a flexibility and having a collaborative approach, maybe with this process, you know, they can actually jump on it. Even we are very happy uh, if anybody have that kind of a vision, because recently even also we have launched uh, the concept called Campus 100. The 100 best higher education institutions we would like to link it to uh, the unique curriculum in the German varsity. So we have a designed uh, the concept of called nano masters, which means the nano masters is the smallest masters activity before having the master programs and linking to the excellence of bachelor program. Maybe if the higher education institutions are ready to explore this kind of thing, we are even uh, we are actually uh, ready to build this collaborative approach and uh, the conceptual programs with them. 
Okay, actually, we have uh, two questions on YouTube. Uh, one is about uh, the Nano Masters program. Uh, okay. When will it uh, start and what is the schedule is what somebody is asking Hem Vardhan, his name is. Okay. And then there's another question which is to do with uh, this person, Harish, is asking, I have 7.3 CGPA, can I get admission in a German university? Okay, I think maybe I am the right person to answer both the questions. So, um, so uh, I think the first student, we are happy. The Nano Masters uh, program already launched last week. So currently, we give an opportunity to, to the four esteemed partner universities from India who actually signed an MOA with German Varsity in the May 2023. I think if you maybe, if you are part of these four universities, you can approach, please approach your management and maybe your spokesperson, or you can write an email to us. If you're not a part of these four universities, so our team can connect with your management and we are very happy to you know invite your universities. So not only to the this particular student and also any university partners in the audience, we're very, very happy to create this kind of, you know, invite students to be part of this nano master program and being a quality excellence. And the second person, I think the 7.93 CGPA, I think, uh, buddy, you have excellent percentage. Apply it, you will get it. If you don't get it, maybe there could be some other reason, but this kind of percentage, definitely you will get a, a good admission in German universities. Even you can apply our own master program at Steinbeck University. And with this percentage, we definitely consider your profile. Yeah, it was 7.3 CGPA anyways. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, there's one more question which I would like to, I think I should ask this to Professor Chandrasekhar. Uh, perhaps this would be the last one before we close. Uh, and there's one more, okay. Uh, this is about uh, uh, Professor Chandrasekhar, how can Indian universities participate in collaborative programs with foreign universities uh, to improve uh, the offerings that we have here in India? Uh, in terms of offerings and also the impact it creates uh, in the higher education. I think Dr. Shanashekar is, uh, the line is not. Yeah, he's not connected. Okay, let me ask you this. Uh, this is the last question today. And uh, this is about how internships and apprenticeships can be integral part of higher education. I would ask this to Mr. Raj and also uh, uh, Professor Bertram, you can also perhaps share a couple of your closing remarks on this before we close for the day. Okay, I will, I will, I will share my insight in a single sentence, Professor. I would like to uh, you to echo me. So, so maybe after that, because you have it now. So uh, absolutely, your uh, the, I mean the internship and apprenticeship model uh, should be a part of the curriculum because uh, it is very important for our student to spend the time and also quality time. So not having a multiple activities and multiple things. This is the reason whenever we create a internship program, we always recommend our partner to make this part of their curriculum. So whatever they are learning in their uh, actual practices, even actually in, our, in my digital screen, you can see the applied robotic control and advanced data science cluster, and also AutoSol, uh, what I mentioned. All this internship program, we used to design the curriculum as the application of the industry. So whatever you learn in your, uh, your uh, classroom, then you need to apply it, because then only the student will be, you know, the real time, uh, he will be ready to solve the real time problem once he get out of the college this is my insight and also maybe uh, immediately i would like to hand over this to professor loy muller because in the project competency methodology in our master program we are also doing the similar kind of a practice so professor yes uh, thank you very much and uh, also thank you very much for this uh, excellent moderation and also this uh, really good uh, good uh, exchange of uh, the perspectives between Germany and India. And what we have learned is at the end, if the students want to get a job, the point is how good they are able to bring in their skills into what the industry wants. And this is only possible if uh, you are working in internships. And what we are doing within Steinbeis, we are linking up directly with companies, but also uh, we are 
defining, I would say, uh, university company uh, where students have also the possibility to work on cases and uh, to develop their skills on practical projects. And I think this is the key also for the future to be able and to get really good jobs in the future. And I think not only in Germany and India, it's all over the world. It's all the same. Thank, thank you very you. much for thank the you. invitation uh, and this excellent moderation. Thank you, thank you. But before we close, just one question from YouTube. Uh, this is a question from Don Bosco ITI, which is in Mumbai. And uh, he's asking, what are the possibilities for ITIs to get German university affiliation? Or rather, how can, let's say, an ITI from India can work with a similar organization or a university in Germany? I think this would be a very nice way to open up a new kind of collaboration if it's not happening already. So I request both of you to uh, you know, answer this. Great. Maybe, Professor, I'll start with. <laughs> OK. Uh, Dr. Madhuri, I think uh, this is exactly apt question at the, at the concluding question also to the session. Uh, as, uh, as a standbys and also as a uh, Indian partner, German Varsity in India was increasing standbys, we focused uh, the master level employment linked activities. But in IITA level, we're also exploring to link the vocational schools here. So if you're ITI ready to also adopt the German language skills until B2, Already, we are in a discussion to re reconnect with the talent campuses in Germany for the outbuilding model to double the German dual study. So if your ITA student is finishing domain skills with you, along with the German language until B2 level, we are very happy to invite to be an industry-linked vocational bachelor program here, where the student will be studying the vocational course, or they will be also linking to uh, linking to uh, employment and uh, you know stipend every month stipend in the German university here and uh, one more opportunity is as after ITI we can we can check the academic qualification of the student as per the Arabian regulations maybe we can also explore with the stand base in the how actually we can uh, link up to the bachelor level association with the stand base as of now we are having a master level we can also uh, try to explore this option maybe uh, your insights please professor yes i think this is very uh, important what you've mentioned uh, also um, we are establishing actually big projects on the african continent for uh, green technology and it's not only the academic level we also need a uh, practical level we need blue color and white color and therefore uh, vocational training education is a very important issue and therefore we also are very open uh, to collaborate with partners in India in this area and also on the on the bachelor level as uh, Rush mentioned and what in Germany is also possible if you're starting uh, vocational education and you are developing furthermore it's also possible to start with this uh, vocational um, uh, degree, then also into a bachelor's uh, program. And I think this openness is given, and therefore we are, especially me and Rush, we are very open uh, to work together and to collaborate with uh, Indian partners in this area. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Professor Bertram and uh, Mr. Raj. And uh, on this note, I would like to close the session. But before that, uh, a big thank you to all the participants uh, on Zoom as well as on YouTube Live. And uh, also the panelists, uh, all three of you, uh, it was really very insightful and inspiring to listen to all that you have to say and also the things you demonstrated, uh, uh, particularly the frameworks from Germany from Professor Bertram and Mr. Raj for giving us the complete picture of uh, various things that are currently happening and also you are how you are implementing them and uh, you know facilitating this movement, I would say, as a part of global mobility of Indian youth and also Professor Chandrasekhar for sharing insights from the government initiatives and all the participants, thank you so much. And uh, the teams, the team NSN and the team German Varsity and Indo-Euro synchronization, thank you so much. And also if in case you would like to get in touch with us, in case you want to ask any questions, you are always uh, 
encouraged to write to us at contact at the rate national skills network.com. This email ID is also available on YouTube and also elsewhere you can find on our website. We would be very happy to respond to your queries and help you if you want to explore further how you can collaborate with uh, German organizations, institutions, and also explore the German higher education system. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Thank you, Dr. Madhuri, and thank you all the panelists.